This year you may have put off appointments like going to the doctor or going to the dentist and you weren't alone, but a new study may have you rethinking putting off your dental appointments. Dr. Charles Sutera joins us this morning to answer some questions that we may have and uh, just hopefully to give us a, a little bit more context in terms of uh, what we've been seeing over the last year. Dr. Sutera, thank you for joining us this morning. How's it going? Good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, um, of course. So I'm an oral health advocate and you know, I'm here to talk about a new study that came out this month, and I think it's going to surprise a lot of people. Um, there's a study that was completed by the Oral Health Institute, and they looked at 500 people, and what they were looking at is people that had complications from COVID versus those that didn't. So they're looking at things like people that were on a ventilator, people that were in the ICU, people that happened to die, unfortunately. And what they did is they compared it to people who had good outcomes. And one of the big things that they did with this study that makes it unique is they focused in on gum disease. And so when they looked at gum disease, they excluded other factors that are known to be risks for COVID complications like smoking or respiratory illness. And what they found is a, a pretty clear link between gum disease and risk of COVID complications. Um, and it's not just a little link, we're talking a major link here. Um, and so that was pretty eye-opening for the industry to see that. So what, what the researchers found is they found people are three and a half times more likely with gum disease to be in the ICU from COVID, four and a half times more likely to be on a ventilator, and unfortunately eight times more likely to pass away from COVID if they have severe gum disease. So does that mean that there seems to be some kind of linkage between your your health, your your gum health, your tooth health, uh, as well as your heart health? Is there is there a link that there seems to be going on in that? Well, you know, this study is early, so there's, there's more to find, but I think what the key is here is gum disease and COVID both cause systemic inflammation in the body, and there seems to be a synergy there. So the bottom line is that oral health affects overall health. And the way I look at it is, it's like making an investment in your overall health by having good habits. It's like putting a deposit in your immune system over time by investing in things like good hygiene, good oral health, good oral hygiene, and practicing you know, daily habits that improve your health over time and make you less likely to have susceptibility to diseases later on. And as far as people who already maybe weren't the most excited to go to the dentist uh, and who maybe have some nerves around it, uh, they have obviously been putting it off for the last year or so. What's the message for people who maybe are concerned about their safety going into a dentist's office or who have just generally not had great experiences at dentist's office? Yeah, so that's the thing. So dentistry has always been something that a lot of people have feared. And, you know, it's it's been a catch-22 specifically this year because, you know, for months we were telling patients to stay home, don't come into the dentist, because we didn't have the protocols in place at that point in time. But, you know, I think the point is now we have this study that shows it's actually oral health is linked to COVID risk and complications. So it's pretty eye-opening to see that, you know, we were telling people to stay away, but the one thing that they were avoiding could be making the risk even worse. So fortunately, now we have good protocols in place. We understand it a lot better that it is okay to go to the dentist and the protocols you know, are being implemented in a way that we can feel comfortable by going back to the dentist and, and taking care of ourselves again. So for someone who's watching who maybe doesn't know where to start, they don't have uh, maybe dental insurance or a, a, a dentist or a general practitioner or anything like that, uh, what, what's the first step to finding uh, doctors who you trust? So a couple ways, you know, usually asking friends and family is a good way. You know, if someone had a great experience at the dental office, that's usually a good indication that it's it's a good place to, to be recommended to. Um, and just check reviews online and things like that, that, you know, you can read and see what other people's experiences are. But the key is basically to, you know, take the initiative. So, you know, basically asking around is the first step, but then making that phone call and actually going in, you know, a lot of people kind of get blocked at that step when it's been a while. So fear has a way of kind of talking us into making poor decisions sometimes. And especially with the dentist, when it's been a while, that could be something that creates a lot of fear. So it's important to kind of remind ourselves that everything should be in perspective. You know, our short-term fears should not compromise our long-term health. And uh, so overall with this study, are you trying to tell me that I probably should be flossing more? That's what the dentist tells me every time is that I got to floss more. And does that mean that there is now a link between your oral health as well as COVID-19? 
Yeah, you hit the nail on the head. So this study basically confirms that it's all about the gums when it comes to systemic diseases. You know, there was some pretty eye-opening studies 10 years ago with cardiovascular disease and gum health being linked. And then about five years ago, we found a link between Alzheimer's disease and gum disease. And now we're seeing COVID is linked to it. So it's pretty clear that flossing is, you know, a pretty minor thing that can go a long way and help people prevent more serious consequences later on in their lives. All right, makes sense. Thank you, Dr. Charles Sutera, for joining us this morning. Uh, very informative stuff that we should definitely keep an eye on.